Hello everyone and welcome back to Unity Cookie. My name is Justin and today's tutorial is going to be all about projectors. Now projectors, um, they're a, a basic tool inside of Unity that can be used for various functions. They can be used to fake shadows, um, decals that you would put on walls or floors. They can be used to create highlights on a characters to fake lights. Um, but today we're going to focus on how to use projectors uh, for shadows mainly and then uh, we will do a little wrap up at the end to explain how they could be used to fake lights. Um, first off, you can see that in my scene, I have, if I push play, I have a camera in the third person view, just a plane and a little camera glitch there, and I have a wall. It's a pretty simple scene, nothing fancy, you know, little guys walking around. Um, what we're going to do though, just turn this pause off, uh, we're going to do two ways to create a projector. We're going to do this first way, which is basically importing it um, from a different set, and then the other way would be to create it from scratch using components. So the first way, we're going to go into Assets. So up here, you're going to see Import New Package. If you, whoops, if you go back down there, you're going to see a uh, one for projectors. Just click on that. You're going to get this dialog box with a bunch of information in there. Um, you can look it over. You can import as you see, but I recommend just importing everything. You'll see now that in your project folder you now have a big folder called projectors. Uh, there are, you know, there's a guidelines tab, but there's also a grid projector, uh, shadow projector, and light projector. For now we're going to focus on shadow projector because what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to fake uh, a shadow on our character so it doesn't look like he's floating on the surface. A shadow will, is a nice subtle way to actually ground um, a character and um, any objects. It just makes it seem like it's not floating in the space that's inside. And it's also a cheaper way too because most of the time you're going to be using either light maps or dynamic lights to get the effect you want for shadows uh, and sometimes a dynamic light depending on how many you put in a scene could be very costly on your memory. So what we're going to do first is we're going to take this blob shadow projector right here just drag it right into the scene. Um, you'll see that Right now you can't see anything because it's basically below the uh, plane line. So if we take and we move it up, shadow appears. And as I move it up, it gets bigger and move it down, it gets smaller. So it's relative to the size of the inner placement actually on the um, plane. So what we're going to do is we kind of want to put it right below the character. Because if we do this right now, we want first thing we want to do is we'll make sure we get above the character. Kind of like right there. So it looks like the character itself is emitting that shadow. Now there's a few things we can do. Whoops, I'll scroll right into there. It looks like the shadow itself is a little bit too big and it's also uh, covering our character, which we don't want to have. So I'm going to pull this up or pull it down a little bit. Whoops. Can I fix it so it's right above it? Now we have all these little um, values over here. The ones that I would actually ever really touch would be field of view. I might change that down to like 20. Because what that's going to do is basically the smaller the field of view, the smaller the blob. The bigger the field of view, the bigger the blob. So if I went to 50, it gets bigger. Oops, that's 2050. You can see how big it is. But uh, we want it fairly tight because obviously that character is not going to be creating a shadow that large. The rest of them, aspect ratio, I don't really use. That one itself, if you put to two, it's just going to scale it on a certain axis. For some reason, it always scales on that X. It's weird. Uh, so just leave that one at one. Um, near clip, far clip plane, you don't need to touch those, just leave it as is. It's basically saying, you know, far clip plane, if you bring that in, if you bring it to 20, it's just kind of bringing it in closer. If you do 2, see how much shorter it makes it, do 5, makes it a little bit longer. You see how it's a little bit more subtle, it's not as dark. Um, if we do 7, it's kind of dark. Let's just do 8, it looks subtle enough. Um, Orthographic size is basically, it's going to take it from projecting from that spot, it's going to make it a square. You'll see right there, it's a square. And that might be useful for some uh, projections in terms of graffiti, but for this uh, purpose, let's just avoid it, uncheck that. You also have something called ignore layers. Now this is going to be important because as we noticed before, he had uh, the projection itself is just literally like it's projecting straight through and hitting every single surface it goes through uh, and it's going out through the character which we don't want to have so if I push play 
When I walk through it, my character gets black. But we really don't want him to walk through it. We want him to be, the shadow itself, to be attached to the player, but also not projecting onto the player. So what we're going to do is first, we're going to have to attach this blob shadow projector to the actual controller. So we'll do that, and we'll notice right away if we push play, it'll be following him. Now, I didn't do the best job eyeballing it, so I'll go in and fix it really quick. Go in. Kind of move around, get a better angle. There we go. Bring us a little bit closer. All right, that looks like a better job. Good enough. Um, so one way that we can do this, actually the only way, is we want to basically ignore this character right here. We want this projection map to say, oh, we don't see him, and just only focus on the floor. So you notice in these um, material, I mean, the material properties, I mean, the actual, not material, the inspector properties of the projector, we have something called ignore layers. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into our layers itself. We're going to create one at layers. Um, there's already one created called character lighting, so we'll just use that one. We're going to select this guy, blob person control. We're going to turn him to character lighting. And inside the blab shadow projector, we're going to go to ignore layers, mark character lighting. Bam, it went away. So now we have the shadow connected to the player, and we also have the um, projector not affecting the character. So it's got we got a nice little fake shadow going. You know, for a good simple third person you know shadow, this is good enough. It's cheap. You know, it reacts to the actual jumping spots, so it's reactive. Um, and it's a very good way just to get that subtle shadow effect using a projector. So the next thing we can do is if we just go ahead and we create another shadow projector, drag it into the scene, you can automatically see, like, right away, if I go and I rotate it, like, just E for my hotkey, rotate it up, see how it just scales to the wall and hits every single surface. Seeing this, it's like we can fake some shadows of like maybe some stuff like like a cube that's hanging down that you can't see. Or it could be a good way to, if you really wanted to, switch this texture up later and make it look like it's grime or graffiti. It's uh, you know, it projects through everything it sees. It's very cool. So that's another use. The last use for today that we'll talk about is the, the light projector. Now a light projector is basically the opposite of the shadow projector in the sense that it's not multiplying a black color over it, so it's not gonna make the surface darker. What it's gonna do is it's going to overlay, um, or in sense of like a screen overlay. So what it's gonna do, it's gonna kinda like pull out the whites and brighten the surface. So if we take the light projector, and throw it right there, push W, and then just move it up. See how it's got that hot spot? Now if we leave that guy there, push play, when my character walks through it, so he gets hit by light, I got that camera function going there, but he gets hit by the light, oops, more specifically we'll just drag it over him just to show it, a little camera glitch there, but see, now this would be ideal for if Say you have uh, a couple lights in the scene that you want to have them look like they're emitting a, a mist of source but not affecting other things. That's where you can kind of call off what it's seeing. It can also fake uh, a lighting source and actually save you a lot of memory as well for if you want to have like a bunch of uh, lights in the same spot. That may appear to be dynamic. So you can also change the color of this as well. So as the blob shadow was for the projector, this one as well is reactive. You bring it up, bring it down. It's very cool. Um, that's about it for today. Um, in future tutorials for projectors, we will go over a lot more complicated things such as graffiti, um, how to use that properly, how to make grunge maps, how to actually use decals to create stickers and other things. Um, and also there's other ways to project actual moving images onto services. So I hope this was beneficial and you learned a lot and you can use blobs to make some shadows on your own. Thanks.